Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Season 2 of the Rule 34 Podcast. I'm your host, Jack, fellow, joined by my fellow co-host. Um, it's All right. How are you, Dom? It's the holiday season. It is indeed the holiday season. Everyone's out on vacation. Everyone's fine, relaxing after a nice good semester or for the semester. Um, we're all at home, you know, just chilling, being grown. But uh, I think for uh, everyone else, uh, we can finally just rest up for a bit. Focus on family. Family. How's, how's your family? Doing pretty well. Uh, very cold because our house is, uh, or our apartment is, uh, it, it's not, uh, insulated. And so, uh, it, that means, you know, in the winter, it's a freezer box. And in the summer, it's like we're on the sun, you know, because there's nothing to properly, you know, m- Properly, uh, how would you say, ventilate, I guess you could say, like, you know, the cold yeah. air, the hot air during those times, you know? Yeah, I guess maybe. So we're all bundled up. We got all the blankets out, you know, classic, uh, you know, the the blankets with the, the lion's face on it or, <laughs> or stuff like that, you know? Yeah. We got those ones out. Uh, we did some Christmas shopping, some of us, you know? Through Amazon or the actual ball. And, uh, oh, I guess this is something worth mentioning on the podcast because it's a pretty big event. But, uh, what are we coming up on now? I mean, technically, COVID really took off what December 2019, but no one took it seriously till March 2020, right? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, technically, it's been three years now of. COVID and uh, yeah because it started December 2018 and uh, you know well I mean technically let's see it's technically been two years you know but uh, starting the third year yeah like we're going into the third year of COVID and you know uh, I have to bring this up because speaking of Christmas I guess I can call this my dad's uh, Christmas gift to me as uh, I've spoken in, in uh, extensively on this podcast, I haven't gone out since this whole COVID thing started, you know? I've only gone out, like, for, like, little occasions, like getting my laptop for school, getting a new phone because the old one's battery was, you know, basically dead. You know, and for the most part, I've just stayed at home for everything, not really getting down anywhere. But uh, what caught me by surprise, and like I said, it's, what I would consider my dad's Christmas gift to me was uh, he let me go out with my brother and two friends who had invited me to go see the Spider-Man movie in theaters. Nice. And then how, how, how was the movie, bro? Uh, it well, was... Spoilers, yeah, I'm not going to spoil it here on for the people on the podcast. I would just say, you know, it was an experience like no other. It was very similar to the experience of... Uh, Avengers Endgame because Infinity War if you remember that had the whole theater uh, quiet and stuff you know because of the ending whereas Endgame it had people going crazy and stuff you know so it's like I would say that experience was very much like watching Endgame that very first time with just how crazy uh, the people in our theater were we had a really hype theater for a lot of stuff, which I, I'm always glad for, you know, some people might say that they don't like the noisy theaters, but like it, it provides a sense of uh, unity when you have like such a excited theater, like all these people, they're excited with you, you know. Yeah. So that was really fun to see and stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, it was just a, a really fun time. Probably a. Probably couldn't ask for a better one moment of uh, going out during these COVID times, you know. And, uh, you know, everything was nice, you know, pretty much well distanced from other people. I don't think there was anyone really seated, uh, like, next to us. Like, there was some space. And, you know, it felt... It felt pretty much the same, you know. It, like, you like it, it didn't feel any different from, like pre-covid times you know yeah it was a wholesome moment 
everyone gets to win. Yeah, definitely a great movie. I recommend people watch. But uh, the two things, or actually, I can't say one of the things because it would be a spoiler. But uh, the one thing I would like to tell people is uh, stop letting their recency bias get to them. The Dark Knight and Infinity War are still better than that Spider-Man movie. Uh, I saw a ton of people claiming it was the best movie and better than Infinity War and uh, The Dark Knight. And I just have to disagree because uh, while this was a unique experience, like I said, I don't think nothing in the world tops uh, the theater experience of watching Infinity War and the crowd's like genuine shock at the end of the movie. Like theaters literally were so quiet and people like were shocked. And like the only thing we had was I am pretty I forgot. What happened? Or I don't know what followed, but like for the most part, I just remember it was like they kept us a year in the dark after that. You remember it was like there was barely any, any follow up movies afterward. I think there was Captain Marvel, obviously, to set up Endgame. Oh yeah. But like it was like there was barely anything. It was like you just had to sit there and wait a whole year to figure out what was gonna happen after the snap. Were you angry during the entire like dark you know year, or, or were you like oh well, we don't? It's about to get intense. We should like keep waiting. I think it was like it was it wasn't really anger but it was like dang we really gotta wait a whole year to figure out what's gonna happen next you know but then it's like you know a couple months you kind of forget about it cause you know again there wasn't any other movies filling it filling the void and then in those right. leading months up to its release that's when you know the anticipation and hype started to build again I I, I personally think that uh like leaving us on like that huge cliffhanger at the end of the new war. Like uh, and then we had to watch it in the like we have, we would have to watch ending the entire year later. Makes me think that they already had the they already had endgame film, does that make sense? Hmm. I might be wrong. And then they could have just released the movie like the day afterwards. But like but uh I, I'm not sure. I'm probably wrong about how fast movie production takes. All right, yeah, so I feel you about, uh, you know, having to wait that long for Endgame, you know, and keeping people in the dark, you know, probably felt very controversial to some people. You know what else sparks controversy, though, Don? What? Tearless. Too many tearless. And the specific tearless that we're going to talk about today this morning at 1117 is tell us about cereal brands and cereal flavors specifically. Uh, at the moment, we have a bunch of cereals in place that we've aligned on the tier list, marking from B all the way to S tier. And, and yeah. Whoa, uh, Jack, in your opinion, uh, before we start, uh, we also have to point out, oh, yeah, uh, not before we start, we also have to point out that we're also going to be listing down uh, cereals that we have never tried out, but we're going to be pointing out how we would think they will taste. So we can also rank on, on cereal that we not tasted. But also, Jack, in, in your opinion, uh, uh, aside from this list that we currently have at the moment, is there any other cereals that you want to throw in and you want to throw in as uh, honorable mentions? Uh... Unless I'm forgetting some, I think this list covered like a wide variety, especially because there was a ton that like I didn't even know existed, you know. Uh-huh. But yeah, I don't think I think this list covered a like great variety. I don't think I'm forgetting any here. This is one very rad cereal. Then. What no, brand? Two, two cereal. Two cereal. Which ones are we missing? Lucio's. Oh, I forgot that. And thing. Shack Food, uh, what was it, Shack Food? Wasn't there a cereal brand based on Shaq O'Neal? Is there actually? You're forgetting Bootyos by the New Day. Oh, true. Yeah, I, I didn't know Shaq had a, had a cereal brand. Yeah, uh, he did, he did. Interesting. Uh, I think it was actually a, uh, collaboration with Frosted Fruit. Yeah, I'm seeing that right now. He was also on the box of Fruity Pebbles. You remember when they were doing a bunch of athletes on them? Like John Cena? Yeah. 
I remember that. Interesting. Better. All right. Also, don't forget our booty oids. Yeah, from the new day. All right. So you said our lowest tier is E, right? E, yes. All right. Start us off, Dom. What do you have in your E tier? Okay, so uh, these include. Okay, so these include two cereals I've never tried before, but they're placed on the list. So in my E tier, for me, we have French Toast Crunch. And for also, I have a cereal called Quisp, which features some sort of kid with, like, I'm assuming it's like, like in front of a bowl, behind a bowl or like Frosted Flakes or something like that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, anyways, yeah. French Toast Crunch, uh, that sounds a little bit weird. That's something I've never tried out before. I personally don't think I would ever like that. And along with Quisp as well, I don't, that's not even like a common household name in terms of cereal brands. Not only that, but it's the marketing on the, the box is horrible. Yeah, just let the, the listeners know real quick. We got this tier list from uh, Jay Schlatt. And so he probably included a bunch. He included like a bunch of random series that we never heard of. And Quisp is one of them. And you want to know what's the funny part, Dom? Is apparently the like the lore of the cereal is that it's pronounced Quisp because the the mascot has a speech impediment. What? He's messed up, bro. Why did I, what? <laughs> yeah, I that, that's that. that's the origin of it. He has a speech impediment. And he can't pronounce it, meaning the actual name is supposed to be Chris, but he can't oh. pronounce it. But yeah, I have that one down there too because it just doesn't look like an interesting cereal. Uh, my E list is really like long. I got a, I got a the different varieties of Honey Nut Cheerios. You know the the frosted, the chocolate, and the apple. Oh, right. why do you, why do you see that? Why, why I mean, I mean the juice? the the original one is just so good that like. You know, I like I I think I've tasted some of them, but the other, like they just don't seem like they'd be as good as the original. You know, huh? like I have that there. I have the frosted cocoa, or not cocoa, uh, frosted rice krispies because it's like why, what, like what, like my logic there is why are you making rice krispies like you know like frosted flakes, especially because they're under the same brand. They're Kellogg's, and Kellogg's has frosted flakes. So why are you uh? Why are you having two different types of sugary cereal? You get me? Yep. And that's another thing that people are going to learn through this series from me is I don't like sugary cereals, especially because think about it, it's supposed to be breakfast, you know? Why are you, why are you trying to give, like, why, why would you purposely, you know, feed yourself a ton of sugar? Yeah, you're going to be hyperactive. Which ties in, I mean, I also have a, I've never tried Special K, but it just doesn't look that good. And the whole sugary thing ties into this. I have tricks, recess puffs, crave, and cookie crisp in E. Cause I mean, tricks and crave just don't were never that interesting to me. But I have I've never tried recess puff, and I have tried cookie crisp. And my thing here is, at at that point, aren't you just eating cookies and candy for breakfast at this point? You're not fooling anyone, you know, just by making it cereal. And plus, cook, I don't know about you, man, but I, I've had Cookie Crisp, and it is terrible. Yeah, I've never tried it, but if you say so. Oh, and then I have Raisin Bran, because, uh... Uh, man, I'm getting some soon. I know you'll probably have it hired up, but I don't know. Raisin Bran just... I mean, raisins and milk? I don't know about the logic <laughs> there. I'll be honest with you, it is, uh... It is an odd uh, combination having like wheat flakes and then raisins and then milk, but it, it's it's an odd combination, you know. Yeah, to be I fair, get it. but uh, for me personally, I like it. But but that's not you know that's for another tier at the moment. But, have you ever tried Wheaties? I have that in E because I I've never tried it, nor has nothing ever made me want to try. I just know it's like a big. It always has like the sports people on it. Right. Uh, I've never tried Wheaties, I'll be honest. Uh, I've placed that in my D's here. Uh, when, when we get to that, but Wheaties, I'm assuming it's supposed to be like, uh, oh, what was it? I'm assuming it's supposed to be like mini wheats, except uh, without the sugar coating on top. Hmm. 
That's what I would think. I get it. And then real quick, sorry, I know my e-list is really long. You can tell. Uh, but the final one is Captain Crunch oops all berries. And the logic I'm going to go here with here is the same one that uh, Jay Schlatt had in his video. And it was, this cereal's been around for 30 years. It's no longer an accident that it's just all berries, you know, because it's like titled oh, oops. Yeah. And plus it's like, I, again, I, I think this is one of those cases where it's like, you know, because, you know, like the other one, the crunch berry cereal, you know, people think like that's the best part. But then, you know, when you have it on your own, you realize you really needed the balance of the original Captain Crunch cereal with it. Yeah. But that's my logic. But that's my E. That's my E. I had a ton of cereals down there. Uh, oh. Anything else on you? Uh, that's about it. D tier now. D tier. D tier, I have, um, okay, I guess I can start off with this, uh, Count Chocula. Uh, that one I've never tasted before, but I'm assuming it's just heavy with the chocolate. I, I remember seeing advertisement for the specific brand of cereal, uh, on TV, I think, like, one time during some sort of fever dream, but, uh, do you know what Count Chocula is specifically? I'm assuming Dumb. it's some sort of, like, uh... The, Pebbles, maybe like, the Halloween so cereals are immaculate, bro. They, that's one they didn't have on here. But Boo Berry isn't on here. They have Count Chocula, though. Okay. These cereals are immaculate, my friend. They're only around during Halloween time, but they are immaculate. Okay, okay. Uh, I guess I'm missing out then. I've never really tried uh, Halloween cereals. I know about them because of my mom and dad. So, wait, so you tasted them before? This one, specific? yeah, th this this year we had a box of uh the blueberry uh, one. Oh, blueberry oh, oh. cereal. I want to say that you, I, if if I had to compare it to something, it's basically like their own versions of Lucky Charms. But with like Halloween esque. Yeah, like, it's basically you know like a marshmallow mix. cereal. Oh, it's okay. it's blueberry count chocula and frankenberry are the three variants and they're only usually around during the halloween time right you're missing out though my friend do you think you still have them like, like selling them on ebay or something probably oh man i hope they don't sell for, like 50 bucks for a box of silver <laughs> because in fact they could also be expired too well, what's in the rest of your D tier? Oh, I got a lot more. Uh, okay, so let me go through them real quick because I got a lot on my D tier. I got I got, I got tricks only because I've never tasted them before, and I personally started hating watching the yeah the advertising like tricks <laughs> for kids like causing some that poor rabbit get destroyed in the morning so <laughs> and get us outside of like just to get a little bit of cereal. You know? <laughs> like he's starving, bro. You let him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've seen that one meme is like, uh, like, like, it's for kids, and it's like cars is for streets, and some car runs over two kids. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. Um, I love seeing that one. Oh Classic. my gosh. I, I'm gonna tell you though, you're not missing out on much when it comes to tricks, it's just not that good of a cereal. Oh, man. Okay, so I, I guess it's bad. I would never say I'm assuming it's bad. Uh, I then have from a bean cereal. It's the Oops All Berries again, because I'm not sure how it tastes. Uh, Fruity Pebbles again. I'm not sure how it, how it tastes as well. I'm, I would assume it's not, you know, uh, not too sugary. Uh, but, I mean, that's something. Uh, I then have uh, Pops and Kicks. Only because... Uh, the, the, I think the, I'm pretty sure they're just the same corn cereal. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I've never seen some. I don't think they're that good. Uh, I, then I have, uh, again, I've never tasted Captain Crunch. Uh, nor peanut butter crunch, but personally, I hate peanut butter. Uh, well, I do like peanut butter when it's specifically uh, tied to something else, like you know, peanut butter and jelly, but if it's just peanut butter on its own, I don't like it too much. Uh, I then I have Lucky Charms only because I I never really tasted it, but I don't I I think I think it one single so like small little uh, you know the small little school cereal bits. Yeah. 
And uh, I don't think I got a good, like, uh, I would say, the experience out of it. But that's just me. I didn't have the honeycombs. Uh, that look cool. The golden greyhounds. Which I guess is like some sort of a sugarless version of the, uh, yeah, the Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Uh, then I have Captain Crunch. Uh, I said Captain Crunch. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all on my detail. Alright, I relate to you with the Fruity Pebbles. I never had Fruity Pebbles, but I've had Cocoa Pebbles, and I didn't like the way that tasted. Especially, like, the way, like, I don't know if you get it, but, like, the way the cereal feels, you know, texture-wise. So, I assumed I wouldn't like it. So, I just assume I wouldn't like it as well, so I put both of those in D-tier. I have Kicks in D-tier because I've never had it, and I just don't know how I'd feel about it. Maybe it tastes like, I don't know, I, I like Pops, so maybe it might taste similar, but I, I don't know. I have Fruit Loops because I don't know if this has happened to you, but whenever I eat Fruit Loops and Apple Jacks too, they kind of get soggy too easily and like real right, nasty yeah. at sometimes, especially if you kind of, if it's just kind of been sitting there, just like not even that long. And then uh, I have yeah. Mini Wheats because uh, I don't know. I know a lot of people like these, but I never really did. Interesting, interesting. That's my D tier, though. Respect that. Uh, I guess now on to C tier. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay, so I guess I'll start off with C tier. Uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, the originals. Uh, I've never had an actual bowl that I bought at the grocery store. Mostly my main experience have been has been uh, through the school cereals that we were given. I, I was going to say that, too. I have it in C2, and it's like, I when I was doing the list, I was thinking about it, and I was like, "I've never had a bowl of this anywhere else but school." Exactly. Uh, but I did like that they provided a lot of different cereals throughout the years. It was mostly the same at the end of the day. I didn't say I got to try something. But for Sam's tell us much with the experience that I was given from the small little bowls of plastic bowls. Uh, it wasn't that bad. I mean. It was a bit sugary on my end, but it wasn't bad. Yeah, I think it's that, too just, much at a certain point. Uh, yeah, so I got next. I also have um, uh, Honey Nut Cheerios. I used to love them back then, but as more, the more I would eat out of a bowl, like the more odd I'd feel. Only because uh, the honey just felt odd. Mm. The only thing that would actually boost up the honey nut cheerios if I had any slices of bananas. I do that too. I do that too. Uh, I then I have Apple Jacks. I never taste those. I've always seen the commercials. <laughs> uh, I would assume they were very good, considering how much advertising they were given. Uh, and I have. Uh... So yeah, uh, Apple Jacks. I've tried Frosted Cheerios. I think. Uh, I don't remember. I don't quite recall it. And then I also have uh, Eggos. So have you ever tried Eggos? Did I go my Eggo? I have not. I only heard about it through J Slat's uh, tier list. Uh, I'm going to spoil a bit. I have it in S tier. Even though I never tried it, I just feel like this could potentially be like a great cereal. Even though maybe it might be too sweet. I don't know. Maybe it changes if I've ever if I ever try it. But like... I don't know. The thought of like a like a maple leaf cereal sounds pretty good. Yeah, that's what you mean. Uh, I mean, looking at the box, it I don't know. It looks so weird. It looks like you're eating like the honeycomb, uh, the honeycomb uh, cereal. But like, it's bad for. It looks like it'd be bad for people who have a uh, tripophobia, whatever. You know, the fear of like yeah, small yeah. little holes. This would this, this would be a nightmare to eat. But uh, aside from that, uh, I feel like looking at the box of Eggos, they would look like they're uh, small little pancakes, I think. Or, I don't know. Waffles. Waffles? Waffles. Oh, waffles. Yeah, there's little pancakes, little waffles. Uh, I'm not sure where to put it. But yeah, that's something. Uh, then I also have Fruit Loops. I tasted too many Fruit Loops over the small school cereals that I decided to dislike them afterwards. Uh, I've never tried Captain Crunch berries. I would assume they're pretty good. Uh, I also have a uh, green berry uh, with onyx sorghum. 
Uh, this definitely looks like one with like veggie type of cereal, but it might actually be good to try. I don't know. That's just me. That's my CJ. I'll buy you, Jim. So, as I mentioned, got Cinnamon Toast Crunch there. I know that's a lot of people's favorite, but like we said, it's just kind of too much at some point. Uh, I have Pops. Uh, pretty decent, not the best. You know, it's that mid, mid-tier C, you know. I have yeah. Frosted Flakes because similar to your opinion on Fruit Loops, after eating it for so many years, it's just too much at, too, at one point, you know. Like Cinnamon Toast Crunch, it's just too much sugar at one point, you know. Yeah. And then I have honeycomb and O's here because, I don't know, I feel like just based on how they look, I think they'd be like a lesser version of like Cheerios, if you get me. Right, I, I go what you mean. But that's my logic. And that's my C tier. Oh, respect, what about uh, your B well, tier? Yeah. And I, I'm going to let you know right here. My B tier and A tier are both uh, going under the logic of I like them. Well, well, some of them are going to fall under the logic of I like them, but like, you know, because I'm not that, like, I'm not a big sweets guy, they right. fall short of S because of like, like at some point it becomes overbearing in a sense, you know? Right. But so what's in your B? Okay, so uh, I guess to start off, uh, B tier, I have the original Kellogg's uh, flakes. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure I tasted. I tried these before, and I honestly like them because, regardless of the fact that they are bland, you know, they're not, there's not that much sugar. It's uh, for some reason the blandness to me, I like it. You know, it's not you know you don't get a punch of sugar, and it's the restraint in the morning. It's just some nice you know corn flakes. It tastes. And nobody Kellogg's uh, was able to throw it. Uh, it wasn't that bad. I don't know. Uh, I also have a uh, honey bunches oats. I really like honey bunches oats because they add in that crunch flavor to the, the little bits of like uh, the honey roast uh, and with flakes along with that. Oh man, it's delicious! I also have raisin bran. I personally like raisin bran because uh, I, I understand that there's a bit of you know people don't like raisins and milk or raisins in general in their food. But personally, for me, I like I like raisins and that bad. Uh, also, I have our Reese's Puffs in B tier. Uh, I've never truly tried Reese's Puffs in a bowl. Now, my days in Cruise Control. Uh, cruise Control. Uh, I also have a uh, Rice Krispies cereal. I'm pretty sure I've t- uh, tasted these before in school, I think. I'm not too sure. Uh, but I would assume they're, they're delicious. I also have uh, Apple Cinnamon Cheerios. Uh, be, only because I've never tasted them, but I would assume. We just have a slight hint of apple along with the flavor, which I would think is pretty nice. But that's my beauty. Nice, nice. And then, I forgot to mention this. Though I though I think the idea of a candy cereal and recess puff probably wouldn't taste good, we got to admit it's an S tier alone for the fact of those commercials that are forever ingrained in everyone's head. Have you ever seen the commercials, Don? I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure every day alright uh, my B tier is I have Lucky Charms in there uh, again pretty good uh, can get overbearing at a certain point and again to truly show like a testament of like how much I'm not like a sugar sweet guy you know uh, I think the normal like uh, I guess you could say like grain Parts of the cereal are better than the marshmallow parts. But that's just me. Right. Uh, I, three that I've never tried. French Toast Crunch, Oreos, and uh, Golden Graham. I have them here at B because, I mean, French Toast Crunch, even though maybe it might be a bit more sweeter than the normal Cinnamon Toast Crunch, it just sounds like it would taste better. Golden grams that makes me think of like graham crackers, you know. I think, you know, that that can make an interesting flavor. And in Oreos, right. I mean, it's like it, it it falls under the same logic of like Cookie Crisp and Reese's Puff, but it it's probably more bearable. I don't right. know. And then the final one I have in B tier is the peanut butter crunch of Captain Crunch, because I I actually like peanut butter a lot. So 
I really so enjoy cool. that one, but not as much as the other flavors of Captain Crunch. Right, right. Which this back. What about your uh, A tier? A tier, okay. Here's some classics. The original Cheerios, um, the original Cheerios, either with sliced strawberries or sliced bananas. Uh, the Cheerios was an absolute childhood banger. And yeah, every morning, you know, just some Cheerios. It's, it's classic, you know, it's just whole wheat, you know, a little bit of sugar on the side, uh, along the side of the cereal, but it, it was good, you know? Simple, nothing crazy. Uh, yeah, uh, that's for Cheerios. And I have uh, Cocoa Puffs. Uh, I remember uh, my parents bought a whole, like, like uh, you know those large rice bags? But instead of rice, it's a whole large Cocoa Puffs. And oh, man, I wish I had them. Cocoa Puffs on its own is a bit much in terms of, like, uh, chocolate. But what I like about Cocoa Puffs is that it transforms your milk into chocolate milk in the process. So once you're done with the cereal, you can drink down the milk as chocolate milk. You know? Mm, I get you. And that's uh, a person like that. It's like, it's like a two-in-one combo. Kind of, kind of. Uh, then we have Corn Flakes uh, from Kellogg's. Just regular Corn Flakes. Especially, like, you know, I'm telling you, bland cereal is not that bad for me. That is... Uh, I also have uh, Frosted Flakes, uh, you know, absolute classic, you know, Tony the Tiger, wasn't too bad. Uh, and th- th- yeah, that's all from my A-list, but, uh, but yeah, Poker Post would be like the A of the A tier in my opinion. Interesting. Uh, my A tier, I have the original Cheerios as well, classic, as you mentioned, you know, not yeah. too sweet. Uh, definitely feels like it's something that you can just feel that you can just have in the morning as a light breakfast, you know, yeah. not overbearing. Similarly, Honey Bunches of Oats is the same way. I have it in A because it's similar in the way of, you know, there's some sugar to it, but, you know, it's it's bearable for like a morning light breakfast, you know. Yeah. I have Cocoa Krispies, uh, just a, a childhood classic in a way, you know. Something that was always usually there for the most part. Actually, not not as much as regular Rice Krispies, though. Uh, I have Count Chocula here. And then I have Captain Crunch Berries. Because I feel like a lot of people like feel the same way. Of, like It's just like a classic cereal. Right. And finally, our S tiers. It's your tiers. Uh, I guess uh, I'll begin off with the uh, the Cocoa Pebbles. Uh, again, similar to the Cocoa Puffs. Oh, I mean, well, I guess I'll throw in all the chocolate stuff. So for my essay, I have Cocoa Pebbles, Cocoa Krispies, and a Cheerios Chocolate, and a Chocolate Delight from Kellogg's. And uh, this new uh, brand called Crave Chocolate. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, okay, the reason why I put these is uh, it's... Uh, the reason why I uh, set up for Cocoa Puffs is that, aside from, I would assume it's delicious for each of these, and I tried some of these as well, uh, especially the chocolate cherries and the Cocoa Puffs. I'm not trying totally crazy from all the chocolate delight from Kellogg's, but I would assume they're delicious. Uh, but you get also the two-in-one special for having chocolatey, you know, chocolate cereal, and you get a bit of chocolate milk if that cereal combines along with, uh, with the milk. You know, absolute bang, I would assume. Uh, although for the Crave chocolate, uh, the reason why I also have that one in S2 specifically is because, Jack, have you ever tried out, uh, like, there's, like, specific snack, uh, which has, like, little pandas on, like, little, like, uh, doughy, crunchy bits? Oh, yeah, yeah. And and that's what what I would assume it's like that. And they just throw in a bunch of these onto, you know, a bowl of of meal. I would assume that's delicious. Uh, also have uh, frosted mini wheats. Uh, yes, there is the sugar sugar coated, but you know, ever since I tried them out, absolute bent. And I also have Oreo O's. I've never tried those, but I would assume that they're the Uh And that's that's pretty much my estimate. Nice, nice. I get your logic on this. 
All right, my S tier. Here becomes the true testament to uh, my true taste. You know, like how I was mentioning of how you know how much I just prefer plain cereals over anything. So I had Eggo in there, like I mentioned earlier, but uh, I have Honey Nut Cheerios, regular Rice Krispies, and Captain Crunch in my S tier. Uh, pretty much staples in in my uh, home, especially Honey Nut Cheerios and the regular Cheerios, even though regular Cheerios is in A. Uh, especially because for the most part, they were usually the cheaper brands for the most part. Which ties into the the other one that's in my S tier that I'll get to, but uh, you know, they're not too sweet. You know, they have their slight bits of flavor and like, I think the main thing is like, it's it's easily digestible if that makes sense. You know, it's like it's something that again you can eat in the morning and even get like another bowl of in a sense. You know, for Rice Krispies, Cabin Crunch, and Honey Nut Cheerios. But my number one cereal is cornflakes. It, it literally has essentially no type of sweetness to it other than adding the milk and maybe like a banana to it. But I think that's what I like the most about it is that it's just very plain. And uh, it's something that you can have, you know, like right as you wake up, right before you go to bed, you know, type thing. And I don't know what it is about it, but I swear I can go through a whole box on my own and not get sick of it. There's something about this this specific plain cereal that all it is is just cornflakes, you know. And it just yeah. it, I don't know what it is, but that that's my favorite cereal of all time. Since you mentioned the favorite cereal thing, uh, I can respect your decision. Honestly, I will put that high on the list, but I've never tried enough of it. If that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. So, um, I guess for my number one, uh, say for my number one, I guess I would have to say the mini wheats. The mini wheats, honestly, for me, uh, the weedy bits that uh, usually they uh, combine along with the milk also go for it. Honestly, I'm not sure. I'm in between mini wheats and a cocoa puffs. Because of the fact that it isn't made to you, I don't know. I think I would say maybe with the number one cereal because of the, the texture it brings you along. Not to me now. But that's just me. And what would you say is your least favorite cereal? My least favorite cereal? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I'm in between Cinnamon Toast Crunch, maybe only because it's just too sugary. And, uh, uh, Pops or kicks? Only because they're just they're bland, but they're just too bland. Yeah, I get you. But uh, that's that's yeah. That, in between those two or three, uh, that those would be my least favorite. I would say my least favorite has to be cookie cookie crisp. I have a personal huh? vendetta against this one because of the fact that as a child you think it's going to be good because it's it's cookies, right? But it tastes absolutely awful. And the wolf is essentially just a ripoff of the Trix bunny where he wants the f- the cereal and they, they won't let him have it, you know? Yeah. Terrible cereal, terrible marketing. What about uh, out of all the cereals we've listed that we said we haven't tried, which one do you, would you want to try the most? And even look, looking into 2022, maybe make it your personal goal to try it. Oh, definitely the Count Chocula ones. Definitely the Count Chocula ones. Because I feel like it's like a one in a life, one in like once in a year type thing. And since I missed out on it, you know, this Halloween, you know, I got to try again next year. Mm, I get you. I definitely might want to look for that Ego one just to see oh, how yeah. that would taste too, you know. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's a, I think I want to try the Ego one. And I want to try the Golden Grams one, you know, because it's like graham crackers, you know. It's like I want to see what how they did that, like, in a sense, into a cereal. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think that's definitely, like, my two choices. Uh, well, would you look at this, Dom? On Amazon for $5, you can get this Wednesday a box of Count Chocula cereal, family size. Five bucks? Five bucks. 
but I mean, I don't think they're producing me anymore, so I'm assuming it's close to expiration date, unless they take a long time until they expire. No, uh, we saw those at Aldi's actually, that's where I got the Frankenberries. No, oh, would you look at that, Dom? Also, on at Aldi's, as my brother says, but on Amazon too, they're selling it. So you could potentially find a way to get it uh, before the year ends if you if you so desperately want to try it, you know. What What would you say? Okay, and then uh, continuing on. Out of all the cereals listed, what would you say is an underrated cereal? Underrated? Uh, I would definitely throw in the, um, uh, which was a good baby. The Crave chocolate ones. Mm. I, think, I don't really hear it's people talking about it, but I'm pretty sure they would find that really delicious. I'm pretty sure people really like, you know, uh, that, you know that one stack with the, the panda on it. The chocolate with the I would assume people would like that a lot, but since they, I would not assume that since it's very dense and it's, the, the bits are pretty large compared to like Cheerios or, or, uh, or like, uh, the Frosted Flakes are like smaller, so it's easier to get in the same amount and more of a proportion. I would assume people would not know about it too much. Or, or it wouldn't, uh, paper cereal wouldn't be, uh, obviously as much as displayed as the other cereals, per se. Hmm. That's my I think my underrated one, even though it probably has like a generally like good opinion on it, is uh, the regular Captain Crunch. Only because I think too many people think the Crunchberry one is is the better version, you know. So I think my underrated would definitely be Captain Crunch. And then lastly, before you know we start closing out, what do you think out of all these cereals, which one is the most overrated? <laughs> Um, I would I, I guess I would say Reese's Puffs uh, mostly because everyone knows it for what it is the rap music that was played in the advertisements and the, uh, the music that we also belong to but I, I don't know for some reason for me chocolate and peanut butter I don't know they just I don't like them personally chocolate and peanut butter you have something that's meant to be salty and then you go with chocolate which is meant to be sweet you know, you know, it's supposed to be nice. I don't, personally, I don't think there's a good mix though. But, uh, and, you know, everyone knows this place. Everyone knows this place. But I'm just, you know, I'm not part of that group, personally. Mm, I get you, I get you. Yes, yes, yes. And what, uh, you? what do you think is the most overrated? I think my overrated will have to be Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Just because I think, like, almost everyone I know, like, enjoys it, you know, but, like, to me, it's like, it's almost sickening, sickening, you know, like with how sweet it can get, you know? And I never right. understood how people could eat so much of it, you know, like after one bowl. And even like, and like, again, it was just those small bowls from school. I felt like, you know, I felt like I was going to like, uh, I felt like my blood sugar was immediately rising to height, like to like a heightening, uh, frightening, like a uh, level, you know? It just seems like it's too much, you know, and I, I, I think, I think people would realize that as they, as they age, that it's just not that great of a cereal, you know. Right. But uh, with that being said, only about thirty seconds left. Uh, I've been your host, Jack, joined by my fellow co-host. No, no, no. Well, thank you all for joining us for another episode of season two of the Rule Thirty Four podcast. Uh, happy holidays to all. Merry Christmas. And uh, we'll see you next Monday for another episode. As always, if it exists, we have an opinion on it. Thank you, and we'll catch you all in the next episode.